Welcome to 28storms.com. Normally we focus on United States weather, but we also focus on big time weather events ongoing across the globe. And one of those today is certainly Tropical Cyclone Yasi, which is a major tropical cyclone that is threatening the Australian coast of Queensland. Here's a quick look at the most recent satellite image. And it doesn't take me for you to understand that this is a very potent storm system. We have excellent outflow channels, both equatorward and poleward. And here's another look at it based on the enhanced infrared satellite loop. And you will see that the storm is making a beeline for Queensland. And we have a very tight inner circulation right here. Of course, the overall trend the last couple of days has been for steady strengthening. And as you can see early on in this loop, the system started off as a very broad area of low pressure. But in the most recent frames, it has become a tightly wound up, significant cyclone. Now, the latest forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center is not that optimistic. Unfortunately, the storm system is already considered to be at 100 knots, which would make this a Category 3 major hurricane if it were in the Atlantic Basin, which in itself is enough of a significant system to take all precautions and, um, frankly, evacuate from the area that is going to make immediate landfall uh, near the coastline. Uh, but unfortunately, it's also forecast to strengthen even further to about 125 knots, which would make this a Category 4 for Atlantic standards. And certainly, this would not be a, a storm to mess around with if you live in the landfall area. To make matters worse, the official forecast track takes the eye directly over the city of Cairns, which has a population of about 165,000 people. Certainly, we don't want that many people to be affected by the storm system. And to make matters worse, Australia's Bureau of Meteorology has nearly the same exact forecast as the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. They're both forecasting a, near, a landfall near Cairns at roughly the same intensity, which would cause devastating impacts. Furthermore, the Bureau of Me Meteorology has already issued gale watches and warnings. The gale watches include areas shaded in this color, and that means that gales can be expected within 24 to 48 hours. That said, we also have gale warnings, which means that gales are likely within 24 hours along this immediate area. Now, the following satellite imagery is called multi-spectral satellite imagery. And basically what this does is it gives us more of a 3D view or perspective as to what the inner storm structure looks like. And we can pick up different things like whether or not a storm is undergoing eye wall replacement cycles. And basically what an eye wall re replacement cycle is, is that initially you'll start off with an eye wall just like any other tropical cyclone, but then a larger eye wall will begin to develop around the initial one. And over time that will become the more dominant new eye wall and it will begin to contract. Now as that storm is undergoing eye wall replacement cycles, the intensity will fluctuate both upward and downward before the eye wall replacement cycle is fully completed. So in other words, once tropical cyclones become this strong, it is normal for the intensity to fluctuate no matter what the upper level conditions or sea surface temperatures are like. So we can expect some differences or some fluctuations in intensity, but I do anticipate an overall strengthening trend up until the time the center makes landfall. Now, some other more important parameters to look for in terms of tropical cyclone intensification. Uh, well, first of all, sea surface temperature is a significant factor. Usually, you would like to see sea surface temperatures greater than or equal to 26 degrees Celsius. And, of course, the storm is in this general area, and sea surface temperatures will remain nearly the same throughout the rest of the storm's path before it makes landfall. So, overall, sea surface temperatures do support continued intensification. Now a bit more technical parameter is called oceanic heat content. Not only will this measure the sea surface temperatures of course at the surface, but it's also a measure of how deep that layer of warm water extends below the surface. And that's also crucial because these stronger systems can also churn up a lot of cool water below the surface due to the fact that there's a lot of upwelling due to the strong winds near the surface. So currently the storm is traversing a slightly cooler pocket but as you can see, if, if this storm continues to trend in the direction that we think it will, it will begin to move over a secondary maximum of oceanic heat content. 
So the bottom line is that both sea surface temperatures and oceanic heat content support the concept that this storm will continue to intensify overall. Another parameter that is certainly worth looking at is upper level winds. Typically tropical cyclones would like to have little to no vertical wind shear so that they could have more room to organize. And sure enough, there is an upper level ridge located directly over the storm system. And basically what you're seeing is all these blue colors, they denote areas of low to virtually no wind shear. So this system is sitting over fairly warm water temperatures and little to no wind shear. And here's another look at the uh, upper level winds. And we have a lot of divergence aloft right over the storm system, which is a favorable pattern. So now in terms of what the steering factors are, what are some of the things that are, are going to guide the storm system over the next one to two days? Well, the main thing that may catch your eye besides the storm itself is this large subtropical area of mid-level ridging. And this is forecast to remain just east of Australia throughout the forecast period. And so what this storm or mid-level ridging will do is force the storm on a continued west-southwest motion into central Australia. And this is supported by pretty much every single forecast model that we have at our disposal. And this is the current time. And of course, here's Queensland. Here's the storm system itself. And if I set this into motion, you will notice that the storm intensifies a bit before making landfall. And by 36 to 48 hours, the storm has most certainly made landfall by this period. You now, if we look at the 500 millibar layer of the atmosphere, we get to see what's actually controlling the, the path of the storm. And sure enough, here's this mid-level feature once again. And notice how that system stays place as it forces the cyclone into the coast of Australia. This is supported by all other model guidance. For example, this is the no gaps model. And as I set this into motion, you'll see the storm here, and it continues west-southwest in agreement with the official forecast tracks. Now, this may look like a, the same model, but I can assure you that this is a different model. This is called the GFS, and just like its counterparts, it's showing a landfall near Cairns. So not only do we have perfect agreement between the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and the Bureau of Meteorology, but we also have fairly good agreement between the forecast models. And this graphic is a pretty good summary of that. This is a summary of your forecast models, and they're in nearly perfect agreement. And the intensity forecasts are virtually the same as well. So we start off at about 100 knots because that's the official intensity estimate from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. And the general trend is for the models to show some more intensification before the storm makes a final landfall. And of course, after that point, the intensity begins to really plummet. So thanks again for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and visit us at 28storms.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's, of course, youtube.com slash 28storms. And like I said, 28 Storms is usually a United States weather-related site, but we also cover significant weather events around the globe, including significant tropical cyclones. So if our viewers want more coverage of South Pacific tropical cyclones, we will be sure to deliver. So once again, go ahead and check us out and bookmark, bookmark us, do whatever you got to do. And uh, we'll update this in the future, especially tomorrow as the storm gets closer to the coastline.